All right, welcome back, back with another edition of the Power Rankings. And as you can see, not my usual setup. I'm going through a little bit of a rearrangement of this room in general, and this is not gonna be my final setup. By this time next week, by the time I'm posting my next Power Rankings, which should be uh, probably Saturday morning for most of you guys watching, uh, I'm gonna be having my final setup actually ready to go. So uploads are gonna be continuing to be a little bit scarce until then, but once we get that point a week from now, uh, the upload should be starting to get a little bit more regular and we can start getting back into the regular floor of things right before the major starts, which should be perfect timing. Uh, I'm going to be trying to go through this list a little bit quicker. I say that most times, but this time I should be going through it quicker just because China has not had any matches in the past week due to their COVID delays. Uh, their matches are set to resume on April 12th. And if you want to see their updated schedule, uh, feel free to check them out. Link in the description to the Liquipedia page where uh, they have condensed essentially the past week and a half of Miss Dota into the last couple of weeks. So it's a very crammed schedule in China. So a lot of Dota to watch there, which is very, very exciting because we're going to start finally seeing some more movement from some of the Chinese teams on this board. Uh, so kicking off this list at number 40, staying in the same spot as last week, having played no matches this past week, uh, that is simply two based. Uh, again, not really going to touch on it too much. They haven't played anything. Their next matchup is going to be a pretty important one for them. It's going to be up against the cut tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And I say important just because... This is a match that simply two base really has to win. The cut is one of the weaker teams in the division. And if they're not able to get this, looking pretty secure for that relegation spot. And at number 39, another North American team dropping one spot from last week, we have Doc Champ, who overall doesn't have like an as terrible week as simply two bases had they just essentially got passed by the team that was in number 39 last week uh, so they go on one of the week they have a pretty rough loss to wild card but nothing that we wouldn't have seen coming so they're number 39 at number 38 and 37 i'm grouping these two teams together because they are both from china so they have not played any matches in the past week we have magma and lbzs they both drop one spot from last week and uh, magma's next match is going to be up on april 12th up against rng and lbzs's next match is going to be up against psg lgd on april 13th so lbzs and I, I know magna is down here as well but both of these guys have been struggling quite a lot in this tour and they've got some pretty difficult matches coming up with them being up against rng and psg ltd so we'll see how they manage following that at number 36 dropping one spot from last week uh we have execration and again execration they got passed by the same team that passed the other two a few teams i've been talking about um not a terrible week i in fact think this was one of their better series that they had up against polaris taking a game off of them but they are still not looking like they're playing nearly on the same level as a bunch of the other teams in this division. And it's totally okay. This upper division in Southeast Asia is incredibly stacked, but they are looking more than likely now to be one of the two, two teams going down to the lower division as they are uh, so far winless in this upper division. And it has been such a tough div uh, d division that we're seeing a lot of these really, really strong teams also starting to struggle a little bit. And I have no idea who's going to be attending this major because of how damn close the Southeast Asia upper division is. And uh, you'll see as we get closer to the top, more and more of those teams start to show up. Uh, all right, now at number 35, dropping seven spots on the week. This is the biggest drop of the week, and I think we could all kind of see it coming. We were just kind of waiting for it. It's been a slow, steady drop throughout the past couple of weeks, but this week was really the nail in the coffin, and that is Nigma Galaxy Western Europe. And uh, this is off of the back of two pretty rough losses, one up against Gaming Gladiators, which makes sense seeing the state that Team Nigma was in and Gaming Gladiators was in. It made sense that we would have the expectation that Gaming Gladiators would win that. Uh, maybe a little bit more dominantly than what we saw. Nigma Galaxy did have that really, really nice game too in that series, uh, which ultimately ended up being the only highlight that this tour really has had to offer for Nigma Galaxy so far. But the nail in the coffin was really that 2-0 loss to Brame, which was an absolute stomping, a series that Nigma Galaxy needed to win. That is one of the weaker teams in the division, another team that has been struggling a lot in this division, and they couldn't even put up even the smallest bit of a fight. Uh, their drafts have been a mess, their lanes have been falling apart right, left, and center. And so, again, I think we could all kind of see this coming with uh, the past few weeks, but now it's uh, looking more than finalized that Nigma Galaxy should be one of the two teams going to the lower division, which, again, for a team as stacked as this, is pretty surprising. But they have really, really not been playing well ever since the start of the season. And keep in mind, this is the same stack of players that everyone was super angry out, uh, saying, super angry about the fact that they didn't make TI-10. And sure, you can make the argument that Nigma Galaxy is a better team on land. We've seen that. But you have to be good enough to make it to the land first. And if you're not, which they're clearly not right now, then you can't really make an argument for them to being at TI. 
So we'll see if they're able to make it through those qualifiers. Because again, if these guys get relegated to the lower division, their only chance of making it to TI is through those regional qualifiers where you have to play against every other team in your region that didn't already qualify for TI, which is incredibly cutthroat. At number 34, dropping two spots from last week, going 0-1 in the week, we have The Cut. Uh, the Cut, again, another one of these teams near the bottom here that's kind of struggling. They did pick up a pretty nice win over Dog Champ, which has kind of set them ahead of the pack a little bit when it comes to the weaker teams in North America. They've got an incredibly important matchup against Simply Two Base coming up. If they manage to win that, they should be safe from relegation, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, for now, they're my number 34. And at number 33, rounding off this bottom row, dropping two spots from last week. It has been going from bad to worse for these guys. Uh, it is Balrogs. Um, a rough 2-0 loss to Infamous, a team that has been struggling quite a bit throughout these past couple weeks. They aren't really able to put up much of a fight at all. And for a team that I had a lot of hope for, uh, things are starting to slip out of control a little bit. And sure, they haven't exactly played against some of the weaker teams in this division yet, but I was hoping that we'd see them put up at least a little bit more of a fight against some of these better teams. I know that these guys have a lot of potential, and we've really not been seeing that whatsoever so far. So as of right now, they drop down to the bottom row after a pretty rough uh, series loss to Infamous. All right, moving up into our next row. At number 32, we have the other Enigma Galaxy. This one from Southeast Asia, who have now surpassed their Western European brethren um, with a pretty fantastic week overall. They go one and one, so they do lose a series. Uh, that first one being the Fnatic, who right now is looking absolutely unstoppable. Uh, they just haven't played that many series quite yet. And uh, after that, after that rough loss, they bounce back and they take down SMG, a team that really should be in contention for that top three spot, but has been struggling in a few places here and there. And Nygma Galaxy, that is a series that SMG really needs to win. And SMG, uh, I mean, Nygma Galaxy is playing the spoiler role quite well. I, I think it's safe to say that at this point in the tour, it's pretty unlikely that Nygma Galaxy makes it into that top three, but they're really giving a lot of these other teams a hard time. This was their first actual official win. They are currently sitting at two wins, but one of those was off of a forfeit from Boom with that whole scenario that happened back in week one. So it's nice to see them get this win. And again, the lower you are on this board, the easier it is for you to rise. The higher you are on this board, the easier it is for you to fall. And for Nygma Galaxy, one pretty good week gets them up into the next row here. At number 31, jumping up two spots from last week as well with a big win. Uh, it was a pretty close series, but a win nonetheless that was quite impressive, a win that they need to get, and that is Hokori uh, taking down APU Can Kings 2-1 to one earlier this week. And again, this could be a case of maybe APU Can Kings are not playing as well as we should, uh, we should expect them to, or Hokori is really starting to turn things on. But all in all, great week for Hokori. They get the win that they need to, and for Can Kings... It's a very, very close series, but again, it's one that you really need to win. And at this point in the tour, it's pretty much impossible that these guys are going to be making it to the majors. So we'll see what they end up doing in the next few weeks. But for Hikori, pretty good all around, and they should be one of the teams that manages to avoid relegation in South America. Following that, at number 30, dropping one spot from last week, we have Obi Neon, uh, who has a pretty rough week. They go 0-2, but I think in general, looking at where they are on the board, kind of makes sense. Um, they have been able to beat teams like Execration in their division, but other than that, it has been an incredibly difficult division for them to get any sort of foothold. Uh, we'll see what they end up doing in the next few weeks. All they need is maybe one or two more wins to just avoid relegation, like they did in the previous tour, which they did at the very last second. But right now, it's looking pretty unlikely for them. Uh, so they drop one spot. At number 29, dropping four spots from last week, a team I just talked about, so I won't talk about them too much right now, uh, King of Kings. And uh, again, they lose a series. And sure, it's a very close series. But this is a series that they should be winning. And a series that they should have won a little bit more convincingly if they had won it. But ultimately, this is not looking like the same Kings team that we had in the previous tour that was quite exciting to watch and was able to... Uh, pretty handedly beat the weaker teams in this region that has really not been the case for this tour so they drop down all the way to number 29 at number 28 going up two spots from last week with a pretty fantastic week overall we have infinity and i say fantastic week despite the fact that they actually lost their only series that they played that being up against thunder awaken but they looked pretty damn good in that series making thunder awaken really work for those two wins that they got and that one win that they took off of thunder awaken i was super super impressed with specifically their drafting and their strategizing which 
for Thunder Awaken is a definite weak point that we were able to point out throughout this past couple tours and Infinity made a really really good job in exploiting that with some really fantastic drafting specifically in the later phases of the draft that second game was really really notable with that Darkseer pick and I believe a Batrider pick in that game as well but either way uh, Infinity pretty impressive week despite the fact that they do lose that series uh, but overall Definitely not one of the weakest teams in the region. It's just a matter of if they're able to actually get the wins to show that off. Following that, at number 27, the biggest climb of the week, moving up 12 spots. And again, the closer you are to the bottom, the easier it is for you to rise. And since they were at number 27 now, that means they were second last at my last power rankings, and that is Brame. Uh, what a fantastic week for Brain. They have a head-to-head -head matchup against Enigma Galaxy, the only other team in this division that was also winless. A super, super crucial series that they needed to win to at least give them the opportunity to avoid relegation. And they absolutely demolished Enigma Galaxy. It wasn't even a close series. This was the, by far the best we've seen Brain play so far, which... Brain hasn't even necessarily been playing that bad. They've had a lot of highlights here and there, but typically their game tends to fall apart around the 15 to 20 minute mark when the better teams in this division just kind of get their shit together and start outplaying them on the map, which makes sense. Brain is a pretty new roster. It makes sense that their coordination would start to fall apart around that point. They haven't been playing together for very long. But this was not that same frame, and I can say the same argument up against their series that they also had against Team Secret that they won 2-1. to one. Granted, that series was much, much closer than that first one, but it's still a win that they were managed to pull off against arguably maybe not one of the best teams in this region, but still a very strong one despite their inconsistencies. And so overall, for Brame, um, fantastic week. We'll see if they can keep up this momentum, but right now it's looking like they are fighting for a very, very realistic opportunity to dodge relegation here and send maybe a few other teams down there like Entity, who has been struggling a little bit here and there, but has still looked quite strong, and Nigma Galaxy, who I've already talked about, has just been an absolute dumpster fire. At number 26, moving up one spot from last week, despite the fact that they played no matches, that is Lava. Again, just from a few teams slipping down, a few teams moving up. Uh, even though they don't play any matches, they move up. Uh, their next matchup is going to be tonight up against Balrogs. Uh, something I think I forgot to mention at the start of this video is that because I'm recording this a little bit earlier than usual, I won't be including the matches from South America on Friday. Um, so those matches are not going to be included on this list. So depending on what the results are for Lava versus uh, Balrogs that happens later on tonight, it will adjust my rankings, but it'll be for the next video. So just thought I would throw that out there. And at number 25, rounding off this row, moving up one spot as well, despite the fact not playing either, uh, that is Vici Gaming. Their next matchup is going to be up against Aster on April 12th. So we'll see how that goes. They've been on a bit of a downward spiral, so maybe this break will be nice for them. We'll see if they're able to turn things around. Moving now up into the third row on the board. At number 24, moving down one spot from last week, going 0-1 in the week, we have Entity. Um, Entity, not a terrible week whatsoever. They had a very, very, very close series up against Team Liquid in which they lost a 2-1. A lot of notable highlights here and there. Uh, their Bane Venno draft that they picked in both of the games that they lost just didn't really quite work out, uh, maybe to the extent that they wanted to. But overall, again, nothing really to take away from this in a super bad sense. I, I think Entity still played quite well, and so they only dropped one spot for this week. I still can safely say that I feel a lot more confidence in Entity than pretty much any team below them on this board. At number 23, moving up one spot from last week, despite not playing any matches either, they move up just because Entity had that series loss. Uh, that is extreme. Uh, their next matchup is going to be on April 13th against Ehome. They have been on an absolute tear, and I'm very, very excited to see Extreme start to play against some of the better teams in this region, which is pretty notable that they haven't played those teams yet. And once we actually see them play against the PSGLGDs, the RNGs, the Asters of this division, that's when we'll start to get a real feel for how good this team really is. And maybe we won't even know that fully until we see them out of land there are some teams notably that perform very well in their own region but struggle on land or vice versa so we'll see where extreme kind of lands on that spectrum at number 22 and 21 staying in the same spots from last week uh, that is going to be four zoomers and wildcard um, pretty different weeks for both of these teams four zoomers having a pretty rough time going 0-2 but in general I don't drop them off quite yet uh, they have been playing against the Death Valley of this division, uh, playing up against, I believe, Evil Geniuses and TSM. And even though they kind of get crushed a little bit by Evil Geniuses, uh, their series up against TSM was quite good. They take a game off of them. It was a very, very close series. They've been giving these better teams a really hard time. It's just the only team that they haven't been able to do that with. 
was Evil Geniuses when they played against them. So for now, I have them at my number 22 spot. It's possible that they continue to drop if they continue to struggle like this, but overall, looking at the teams that they've played against and how much of a hard time they've been able to give them, I've got them there. And for wildcard gaming, uh, they go one and one in the week. They lose two to one, uh, two nothing, sorry, to TSM FTX, which again, makes sense, very strong team. Um, but they have a very, very strong win over DogChamp 2-0, a super, super dominant win. Um, so for wildcard, I again, feel quite confident having them at my number 21 spot. And at number 20, staying in the same spot from last week, uh, this is going to be eHome. No matches played in this past week, of course, because of the break in China. Their next matchup is going to be on April 13th up against Extreme Gaming. So be on the lookout for that one. At number 19, dropping three spots from last week. So they were initially in the second row last week. Now they drop off because of a pretty rough series loss. Not in the sense that it was a one-sided series by any means, but that was a 2-1 loss to Brame, and that is going to be Team Secret. Um, again, it wasn't a one-sided series. It's not like they got crushed by Brame in the same way that Nigma Galaxy did, but Secret has been continuing to show this inconsistency, this pattern of uncertainty that they've had throughout this entire DPC season thus far. And every time it feels like the team is really starting to get things together. Uh, for example, I'll talk about that first series that they had where they first initially switched Nisha back to the mid lane and Sumail back to carry. I thought it was fantastic. They were playing very, very well. And things have gotten a little bit more iffy since then. And so this past week has been kind of another shocking reminder that Team Secret maybe still isn't the secret that we expect them to be. And I really feel like they've been not playing as well as we expect them to. Specifically Ice Ice Ice, who I know has been getting a lot of flame. But I really don't think that they've been utilizing Ice 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 as much as they could. As much as Evil Geniuses did last year when they were doing very well. Uh, very well, where they would uh, give Isis Ice this, you know, unique cheese hero that worked very well on him, or they would first pick his hero every single game, knowing that he's a very reliable mid lane, uh, off lane player that is able to play those hard matchups. I really feel like they haven't been utilizing Isis Ice Ice in the drafts nearly as much, and again, we'll see if they're able to turn things around. It's looking a little unlikely right now that they make it to the major. They are tied with, I believe, two other teams right now for fourth place in Western Europe. We'll see if they can get themselves ahead, but this is a series, the one against Brame, that they really needed to win, and they kind of let it slip out of their hands a little bit. At number 18, moving up one spot from last week, they finally get a little bit of a bounce back after a pretty rough start to the tour, and that is infamous. A big 2-0 win over Balrogs that was a really, really nice, strong win from a team that, as I mentioned, has been kind of struggling a little bit. They were on a two-game losing streak with losses up against Lava and Hokori. They managed to turn things around with a nice win. Their likelihood of making it to the major is still quite slim. Again, only two slots in South America, so having even only two losses already is a pretty big hindrance, but we'll see if they're able to turn things around. They, I don't believe they've played either Thunder Awaken or Beast Coast yet, so if they can take those series off of them, then that does give them a realistic opportunity to make it potentially. All right, and at number 17, rounding off this row, moving up one spot from last week, going 1-0 on the week with a 2-1 win over Execration, that is Polaris. Um, fantastic week for them, showing that they are definitely one of the teams that is throwing their hat in the ring when it comes to who's making it to the major from this region and has been giving these good teams, these better teams in the division, a very, very hard time. And sure, Execration, definitely not one of those teams. That is reflected in their placement on my power rankings right now, but... Polaris continuing to show this uh, dominance over those teams. And I'm very, very excited for them to play against the other best teams in this division. Following that, at number 16, kicking off this next row, dropping one spot from last week, we have SMG, who overall doesn't have a terrible week. They go one and one. They have a very, very strong win over OB Neon. And then they follow that up with a rough loss to Nygma Galaxy, which I already kind of touched on when I talked about Nygma Galaxy. And for SMG, a team that, you know, could have made it to the last major if we had one. Obviously, they had lost those tiebreakers, so I don't think they would have qualified. This is a team that should still realistically be in contention for that spot, one of the front runners for that spot. And they're still showing that inconsistency that has been plaguing them for quite a while now, where they're able to be very, very competitive with some of the best teams, but they aren't always as dominant over the weaker teams here. And so Enigma Galaxy does get the best of them over there, which does hinder their chances of making it to the major. 
Following that, number 15, moving up two spots from last week. This was kind of the series that I was waiting to see from these guys. Uh, that is Quincy Crew. Uh, I've been talking about Quincy Crew quite a bit throughout these past few weeks, how they've been getting the wins, but they've not been super clean wins, making a lot of mistakes that are pretty uncharacteristic for the team. Their drafts haven't looked as dominant and just again really like amateurish mistakes that they've been making and sure this wasn't exactly a perfect series that they ended up having uh with a 2-0 win over the cut but it was still a nice win nonetheless and i gotta say it was probably their best series so far they have yet to play the other great teams in this region so far those being eg and tsm we'll see what happens when they actually do meet up i do think that right now in their current state they are the weaker team of the three but we'll see what happens when they do end up playing them that should be coming up in the next few weeks Following that, at number 14, dropping one spot from last week, we have Team Liquid, who wins their only series here. But in comparison to the team that passed them by one point, I didn't think they had quite as good of a week, despite the fact that they did get that win. Um, it was a 2-1 win uh, over Entity, which when I talked about Entity, it was a very, very close series. So overall, not a terrible time for Liquid. I do think that they've been having a little bit more... Uh, their drafts and their strategy and their roster in general hasn't looked as strong as it did in the previous tour but again that was a very high bar to reach they went six and one so as long as they should still be able to make it to the major they should still be okay following that at number 13 moving up one spot so this is the the team that ended up bumping liquid down uh, also having a good week going one and oh this time however being a little bit more dominant that is fanatic with a super strong 2-0 victory over nigma galaxy and i don't think too many people are talking about this right now and it makes sense fanatic has only played three series so far but they're currently undefeated, so we'll see how far they're going to be able to take this. They are looking like one of the front runners right now to make it to the major slot, which makes sense. They should be one of the teams going there, and with how much momentum they kind of ended off the last tour with, it again makes sense that they're playing very, very well. And they might be threatening right now the top two spots in South America, or Southeast Asia, sorry, uh, on my power rankings, and they could be in the top row by the end of next week. Who knows? Following that, at number 12, dropping two spots from last week, they didn't play any matches, but for the same reason I dropped them out of the top row last week, I just, they've only played one match so far, that's Team Aster, so I can't realistically compare them to the rest of the teams on this board. Uh, for the other teams that haven't played any matches this week, they have played more than one match already, so I kind of have a good feel for the team, but for Aster, we've only seen them play once, so until we see a little bit more from them, going to be dropping them down the list at least just a little bit in the meantime uh they do have their next matchup which is going to be on i believe april 12th up against vg gaming so once we see that they'll be probably moving up the board a little bit more they should win that series at number 11 staying in the same spot from last week we have thunder awaken uh thunder awaken strong 2-1 win over infinity um again I think their drafting has gotten a little bit better. I do think, like, as I talked about when I talked about Infinity, Infinity did outdraft them a few times in this series, specifically in the game that Infinity did win. But I do think that their drafts have looked a little bit more synergistic. I do think their strategies have come together a little bit better. And it's just a matter of, you know, how well they're going to be able to perform at a major. And I think it's pretty safe to say that Thunder Awakens should be a major team from South America. So I'm just eager to see how they end up doing against some of the other best teams on this list. Following that, at number 10, dropping two spots. So they fall out of the top row right as I put them up there. Uh, not a terrible week for uh, these guys. I think these guys still have a realistic opportunity to bounce back. But overall, I just don't think that they're playing right now on the same level as the rest of the teams up here. Uh, that's Tundra. You know, again, not to take anything away too much from Tundra. I dropped them down two spots after one pretty rough series, but that doesn't mean that these guys, I think, are necessarily bad. I just think that they are still kind of dealing with some of that inconsistency where in one series, they'll look fantastic. They'll look like the best team in the world and they'll go on like a four series winning streak. And then they'll have a series like this one up against OG where they show that they do still have their weaknesses here and there. And sometimes they have series that just look flat out terrible for them. So for Tundra, we'll see what they end up doing in the next few weeks. Uh, they do drop down two spots, but again, I still think they are one of the best teams in the region by far. And it looks like right now, Western Europe kind of has its top three teams pretty cemented right now in the teams to beat in the region. And at number nine, rounding off this row, staying in the same spot from last week, we have T1. Uh, they go 1-0 in the week, big nice win uh, over OB Neon. Again, not the most impressive. OB Neon has certainly been struggling throughout these past couple weeks, but it's a win nonetheless. They're keeping themselves in contention, and right now they are currently leading the pack in Southeast Asia when it comes to their standings. And we'll see if that remains the case when the other teams start getting some more games under their belt. For example, Fnatic has only played three series so far, but they're 3-0, and Boom has only played two series so far with that one loss 
loss that they had as a forfeit. So when they actually get some more matches under their belt, we'll see if T1 is able to hold their spot at number one in the region. Now, jumping into the top row, starting things off with number eight, a team that drops down six spots. Not necessarily a terrible week, but again, the closer you are to the top, the easier it is for you to fall. And Gaming Gladiators has learned that lesson pretty harshly uh, this week as they drop down from second spot all the way to number eight. And uh, again, not a terrible week. They do suffer a pretty tough loss to OG, who kind of just absolutely handled them in that series. Uh, but they do have a nice win over Enigma Galaxy. Again, Enigma Galaxy has been struggling a lot, and the fact that these guys are the only team so far to have dropped a game to them, and not only that, it looked pretty bad when they dropped a game to them. Maybe they were just uh, underestimating Enigma Galaxy's potential. To their credit, they did snap back and win that third game that won them the series, but overall, not the best week for Gaming Gladiators, and I can safely say that in comparison with the rest of the teams that are ahead of them so far, um, they did not have nearly as good of a week, nor have they looked nearly as dominant as consistently as the other teams on this list have in this tour. So now getting into number seven, moving up five spots from last week, um, another team from Western Europe. And right now I believe they are the number one team from Western Europe on this list. Um, they had about the best week that you could possibly ask for. And that's OG with 2-0 wins over probably the, the arguably, uh, I'm sure if you asked pretty much anyone who they thought the two best teams in Western Europe are, they would likely say Tundra and Gaming Gladiators. And they 2 owed both of them and looked pretty damn convincing doing so. Uh, their drafting has been fantastic. Specifically against Tundra, the position for uh, Enigma, which jungled in one of the games, has just been one of an OG's go-tos throughout this past tour and has looked pretty fantastic every time that they've done it. Uh, they ran very similar drafts in both games up against Gaming Gladiators, but they showed that they were able to read Gaming Gladiators drafts and their strats very, very well and were very, very good at executing those strategies. So overall for OG, they move up five spots. Wouldn't be surprised if they end up moving more in the coming few weeks, but they had just about the best week that they possibly could have had uh, in this past uh, couple of days here, taking down the two Goliaths of the region. At number six, staying in the same spot from last week, no matches played. That is RNG. Uh, their next matchup is going to be on April 12th up against Magma. So we'll see how that goes. At number five, moving up two spots from last week, we have Evil Geniuses who go one and oh, they absolutely stopped four Zoomers. And as I previously talked about when I did talk about four Zoomers, um, four Zoomers has been able to really give these top teams a really hard time, like TSM and Quincy Crew, who weren't quite able to beat uh, four Zoomers as easily as you'd expect, but EG was able to do that. And sure, that isn't exactly a direct meaning that EG is just better than those teams right now. But overall, EG has looked fantastic. This has been a way more consistent, way more confident, way more dominant EG than what we saw in the previous tour, which got a lot of its success from MSS filling in from Nightfall. That has not been the case in this tour. Nightfall has looked fantastic. He's looked a lot more comfortable in his role. And overall, uh, like that five-man black hole or whatever that uh, you know Abed had on his Storm Spirit with Ags was fantastic. And in general, I think EG is starting to really come back into form from what we know that they're able to do. We'll see if they can translate that into a second place finish once again at the majors, <laughs> uh, or if they're able to over finally be able to overcome that. But whether or not um, that's going to happen, they do have some pretty big matches coming up in the next few days up against both Quincy Crew and TSM. So we'll see how those matches end up going. Those are going to be likely the deciding matches for who ends up making it to the major. Following that, at number four, moving up one spot from last week, we have Beast Coast. Uh, they haven't played any matches this week, but they do pass Gaming Gladiators, who took a pretty big tumble this week. So overall, um, Beast Coast still being one of the most dominant teams in the region by far. They have their next matchup on April 10th up against APU King of Kings at, uh, I believe, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Following that at three, uh, number three, moving up one spot from last week as well, we have TSM FTX. Fantastic week for TSM FTX. A uh, big 2-0 uh, win over Wildcard Gaming, who has been building up a lot of momentum as of late. And a pretty close 2-1 uh, win over four Zoomers, which as I've been talking about, four Zoomers has been giving these best teams a pretty hard time. So TSM FTX still does come away with the win. Not the most convincing, but overall, I think I can safely have TSM at my number three spot. And at number two, moving up one spot from last week, I was really torn between having these guys at number two or having Gaming Gladiators at number two on my previous list. But after a lot of, 
you know, watching those replays and really weighing things out, I decided to put Gaming Gladiators, but now it is going to be Boom at number two, taking back that spot. Uh, they haven't even played any matches in this past week. They've actually only played two series so far with uh, one of the series that they were supposed to have played being an automatic forfeit to Enigma Galaxy, which was pretty unfortunate, but regardless, uh, still looking quite good. Uh, their next matchup is going to be April 9th up against Execration. We'll see if they're able to win that. They should, given that the Execration team is all the way down here on the list, but regardless, they're in my number two spot, which means my number one spot, a team that has not played in quite a while now because of the pauses in China, PSG LGD. Uh, their next matchup is going to be on April 13th up against LVZS. They have looked fantastic so far. We'll see if they can keep up with that momentum. Again, uh, being one of the most dominant teams, not only in the region, but the entire GPC so far. I think they've only lost one entire game so far in the three series that they've played. So overall, fantastic for PSG LGD. And until they show any sort of struggle at all, they're going to be my number one team right now. At least until Team Spirit comes back on the list because... Team Spirit realistically normally would be my number one team. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, sorry for the different setup. By this point next week, I should have my uh, complete setup absolutely finalized and my uploads will start being a little bit more regular. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked, feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will talk to you guys very, very soon.